I'm Jackie with the Rock Feed for this week. Hey, I'm Alyssa with your record releases. And we're going to be talking today about how TRL was canceled on Monday. But first... In honor of their new self-titled full-length record release, the small hardcore band Trash Talk from Sacramento, California plans to do a full U.S. tour with Alpha and Omega. And in some cities, the two will also be playing with Every Time I Die. Colorado-based Fear Before, previously Fear Before the March of Flames, is releasing their new self-titled album on October 28th from Equal Vision Records. The name change stemmed from a new musical direction the band is taking on the album. Making guest vocals on the album will be The Fall of Troy, Heavy Heavy Low Low, and Portugal The Man. The collaboration is sure to spark interest for new listeners because of the wide variety of vocal ranges each band has. Be sure to check them out when they come to New Jersey next week on the 26th in Maplewood at the Garden State Music Factory. New Found Glory is now signed to Epitaph Records after releasing their new combo album with International Superheroes of Hardcore. They also partnered up with Bridge Nine Records this past April. New Found Glory will be performing at the upcoming tour with Four Years Strong, Crime and Stereo, International Superheroes of Hardcore, and A Day to Remember. This tour was supposed to incorporate the upbeat punk tunes of Set Your Goals, who dropped the tour before the first show. Set Your Goals is currently writing a new record, which release date is soon to be announced. You might have seen the Color Fred this past summer at Warp Tour, and if you enjoy them, then you'll be happy to know that they just announced a tour with Hawthorne Heights. The Never Sleep Again tour this fall will feature the bands Emery, Tickle Me Pink, and The Mile After. If you haven't heard them before, Fred Machino is the lead guitarist and former co-vocalist in Taking Back Sunday. Fans will be happy to know musically there are a lot of similarities, but they definitely don't imitate. After a long hiatus, the band Sense His Fail is about to release their new album, Life Is Not A Waiting Room on October 7th. You can also pre-order this CD on iTunes and you'll receive two exclusive bonus tracks. Lights is a one girl act that can be summed up as Gwen Stefani meets Katy Perry. Hailing from Toronto, Canada, she's moved up in the music industry by self-promoting on MySpace and also using her music in Old Navy commercials. She's brand new onto Doghouse Records and will be releasing her debut sixth song album on September 23rd, which is full of catchy beats and dreamy vocals. Eulogy Records has just announced their new tour titled This Tour Sucks. It will be featuring the Mongoloids, Kids Like Us, Thick As Blood, and Years Spent Cold. They will be touring across the U.S. starting in October. They will also be playing at the Stelton Church in Edison, New Jersey on October 25th. If you're into hardcore or want to hear the newest revolution in hardcore, you'd love Crime in Stereo. Their newest album is coming out September 20th called Selective Wreckage, and they just released one of their new songs on their MySpace. The song is called Everywhere and All the Time and already has 17,000 hits in just a week and a half of being posted. And now the pressing issue of TRL's cancellation. How will it affect the music industry? Um, basically, uh, Dave Cyrilnik, the executive producer, said it's the right time um, to cancel the show. It started off in 1998 and actually the peak was 1999, which is kind of sad considering the past nine years. It's has been going downhill. We all pretty much know MTV is not what it used to be, right? Yeah, it's all reality shows and whatnot, so music doesn't really consist of, MTV doesn't really consist of music, so I don't know if it's viewers will be disappointed. Well, I mean, I don't really watch TRL. I'm not, I'm, I don't really know too many people that watch TRL anymore. Right, right. Um, it's not what it used to be, you know, Britney Spears and mm -hmm. Sync back in the day and then like late 90s, that was Aguilera. basically what made the show. Right. And Carson Daly, after yeah. Carson Daly left, we all know that's when the show went mm -hmm. downhill. Well, special guests like Carson Daly and pop stars made the show will be there at right, the Right, right. Britney Spears. Britney Spears, Eminem, hopefully NSYNC will reunite, maybe. Right. So all you girls out there that were NSYNC fans back in the day, like me, I don't know about Come you. Come back out and watch it. Come back and watch. It's a two-hour season finale. That's true, and it's on. It's going to be on a Saturday in November. Um, but basically, what the topic is: is this really going to affect MTV at all? Like, without like having their music video TV show, is it going to affect the channel whatsoever? Because their roots are music, but mm -hmm. 90, like you said, 90% of the TV shows are all reality. Yeah. Well, I doubt it because there's BET for hip-hop and rap, then there's Fuse for alternative exactly. and punk, so what does that really leave? Yeah, Fuse, no is, the only, really, Fuse so. is the only channel that plays music videos right. anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have MTV2 and MTVU, right, but MTVU right, right, is basically college, college reality, college. so I mean, that doesn't really count right. either. Like, and VH1 is... MTVU is more like indie and punk exactly. like, stuff like that, so, so all the genres are really separated, so I don't know really what that leaves MTV for. Exactly, so I mean... If record labels really need to put their work out in music videos, I guess right. they're going to have to start going to the other other music channels right, to absolutely. promote their mm -hmm. music. Because TRL, I mean, 
as you know, it's mostly radio stuff. It's not underground. It's not indie. Yeah, I mean, it's basically like the new Metro station yeah, yeah, yeah. and, you know, the basically Pussycat punk. Dolls and all that stuff. Right. So where is the indie music underground mm -hmm. scene going to go? It's probably going to go to Fuse, I'm right. thinking. Yeah. I mean, Fuse has different segments of, like, hip-hop, and they have their pop-punk stuff. They exactly. really incorporated everything, so they really took the, the light from... MTV. Mm -hmm. so. And MTV too, I know they just leaked the Cold War kids. I don't know if you guys have heard of them, okay. but they're pretty the much big brand MySpace new. They're yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Big MySpace. MySpace. So, um, I mean, without TRL, I, don't, I really don't think ratings are going to suffer because nope. ratings are obviously down if they're canceling the show. I mean, it's always fun to walk through the city and point to the TRL, you know, yeah. building and like watch see if exactly. there. Exactly. But other I mean, than that, I don't. There's, I mean, if TRL's losing, then I mean, something else is going to come out of like TRL. Yeah, so they're not gonna just MTV is a huge corporation. It's a music. Yeah. Music T V. Yeah. So exactly. Something music related will definitely Hopefully. Come back or are they gonna go back to their what they're doing now? Is this all reality? I and know. I mean are they gonna still do the, the yeah. gauntlets and I know they're casting for Real World twenty two, like when is that gonna end? Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I mean hopefully something musical happens. will come out. But yeah. maybe they'll go but back for to now. You have other something. there's other music channels. Yeah. That everyone can watch. Listen to so. Fuse. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to Fuse, M T V two still yes. Sometimes has mm -hmm. some good shows, so. Or even just use record label websites or Yeah, just the internet's big now yeah. anyway, so. Use the internet, mostly. Absolutely. Yeah. But anyway, that's our commentary for today. I'm Jackie. And I'm Alyssa. And now over to Dave and Jeff with the Splash Damage Report. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Splash Damage, video game news and reviews to hit you and everyone else around you. I'm Jeff, with me always, my co-host Dave. What's happening, my fellow geeks and gamers? Today, we're going to be reviewing Spore, the revolutionarily innovative new game from Maxis, the same people who brought you such greats as the Sim series and City of Heroes. Spore was released last Sunday, selling out all over the country in a matter of hours. Spore's allure seems to stem from its unique style of gameplay, interactive environments, and unlimited supply of user-based creations. As soon as the power flips on, players are thrust into the seas of a brand new planet and must begin their quest for evolutionary dominance. Beginning as a simple cell in a 50 million gallon tank is hard enough, but players soon find out they're not the only ones striving to survive. Spore's genius comes in the form of its unusually high level of diversity and customization. As you progress from low slug on the totem pole to big kahuna the sea, your creature develops mannerisms and traits based on how you played. Got a penchant for violence? Devour everything in your path, and you'll gain vicious mandible perks such as razor-sharp pincers or defensive spikes. Prefer to play Peacekeeper? You'll develop an array of camouflages, flashing lights, and dance moves that'll leave even Gandhi wishing he started off as a Spore. Spore's gameplay throttles through five unique stages. As your creature grows and learns, you'll progress from an aquatic cellular critter to a full-blown land-loving animal. You'll fight or befriend your way through a diversely populated island until the next evolutionary epoch takes your creation from a loner to a tribesman. All the while, your life choices continue to mold your species into lifelong success stories or epic failures. Choose carefully. Experienced players will eventually be able to lead these tribes to world domination and even space-age civilizations. Just like civil civilizations, however, all great games have their downfalls. While no game has anywhere close to the realm of creativity Spore's Creature Creator allows for, the buck really stops there. The gameplay gets pretty repetitive after about two run-throughs, and while the musical scores are delightfully upbeat, you'll soon start to starve your own creation just to avoid the constant murmur of munching. Overall, your opinion of Spore will probably depend on how creative you can get. Detailing just one creature can take anywhere from 10 minutes to 2 hours. It really is just based on how far you can push the envelope. Any final opinions, Jeff? Well, the different styles of gameplay are, in are an intriguing notion. Switching from a basic 2D eating game, vaguely reminiscent of Pac-Man, to a 3D RPG, and finally into a full-blown real-time strategy game. It's a great concept, opening the door to many audiences. The only downside is, it only happens in one or two of the stages. Otherwise, I do pretty much agree with you. While the creature creator is superb, there simply aren't many other features that add to the replayability. Agreed. Now it comes down to the wire, where we give our final three Bs. Buy it, borrow it, blow it off. I'm going to recommend borrowing this one. Definitely worth at least a test drive, but the lack of extra features, in-game activities, and overall fun factor really just isn't worth dropping 50 bucks. I'm going to agree with you. It's not really worth that $49.99 price tag, so I'm going to blow it off. Get the Creature Creator instead. $40 cheaper, with the, it's still with the innovative design specs that are the key component in making this title worthwhile. Well, it looks like we're out of time now. This has been Splash Damage. I'm Dave. And I'm Jeff.
Hi, my name is Eric Malave, and I will be presenting the movie reviews. First, I will review House Bunny, starring Anna Faris. You may have recognized her from Hot Chick, the Scary Movie series, and Just Friends. The movie revolves around Anna's character, Shelly, a Playboy bunny who was kicked out of the Playboy Mansion for being too old. Trying to find her place in society, she ends up with the Zeta Alpha Zeta sorority. Shelly tries to help her new friends recruit new members. She teaches, them the nerdy, she teaches the nerdy members how to use makeup and how to get men. This movie, which came out recently, has received great reviews. It is said to be Anna Faris's best movie yet, which is really good for her career. This movie is guaranteed to make you laugh your pants off. Well, maybe that's what Anna really wants you to do. <laughs> the next movie I will review is Righteous Kill. The movie stars Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. These two stars play as detectives who try to catch a vigilante serial killer. The serial killer is killing various criminals and finishing the job that cops cannot do. Eventually, as the plot unfolds, they find that the vigilante's crimes resemble a killer that both detectives put away years ago. Who doesn't love to see these two together? I know I do. They're great. Only when the story is great. This movie is a major disappointment as the story is slow to unwind and both Al and Robert had to make a good movie out of a terrible script. For all you Al Pacino fans and Robert De Niro fans, you will love the movie as it delivers good lines here and there. The action is great, however, the slow story is still slow to unwind. Released earlier this week was Speed Racer. For all you Speed Racer fans, this movie blows. The movie was supposed to be about fast cars and high speed action. What a lie. This movie was so slow. I cannot stress on how horrible the movie was. I mean, there were great actors, Emil Hirsch, John Goodman, Susan Sarandon, but the script was hor horrible. Save yourself the money and definitely the hours and do not see this movie at all. I'm Eric and that was your movie reviews for this week. I'm not gonna go, and I know that's ignorant, but I don't know. I'm not gonna do it. I'm, I'm not saying it's not self-involved, but it's, it's, it's the truth. Same as how when you sit there and you like when they show the commercial on TV of you know kids in third world countries and you're like wow I should really do something about it and then you go back to your your life and you forget about it. In my personal opinion, though, I do feel that if you are an American, you do have a responsibility to educate yourself on what's going on with our country, and that it is your obligation to vote, whether you choose a side or not because I'm an independent and I vote based upon who I think the best candidate would be regardless of party or, you know, Democratic or Republican. So I think that it is all of our responsibilities to participate in government. What do you think needs to be changed in our country? Um. I think they need to do something about the taxes because right now they want um, higher class uh, people to pay less taxes than middle class and lower class people and that's one of the main things that uh, Obama's trying to change so that's what I like because you know I'm middle lower class I'm not real high class you know so what I want to see change are the foreclosures that are happening um, I don't think it's fair that's happening to um, what's happening to middle class people um, McCain has seven houses he didn't even know his answer that was very sad I didn't like that and um, the fact that he has seven houses means that well, me and my friends feared that eventually there is going to be no middle class, only poor or rich. And I don't think that's fair how they're just closing the gap so they're, so people from lower income doesn't have a chance, don't have a chance to um, work up to have a house or afford their apartments. I want to see that change. It's um, time to see a change and I also think it's important that our president had had the experience of being, you know, middle class and poor so he knows what it's like and he does he's not oblivious to the situation like McCain who thinks everybody who makes five million dollars is middle class so I think that's an important factor in the you said change. What do you um I want to see the economy get a little bit better well not a little bit but a lot better I don't know if by one term Obama can make that happen but he might be able to put the fundamental steps in the way to make that happen and uh, you know just our rights as people, like, you know, stay with pro-choice and all that other stuff. And what, is, what do you think is the most pressing issue facing America for the upcoming election? I think our most pressing issue is um, economy right now, um, gas prices, uh, the way things are going with our economy is not looking too good. A lot of companies are 
are um, losing a lot of stock. Stock market is not doing too well. Um, so I think the economy needs to be, um, a change needs to be um, brought to the economy and things need to be better there for. What do I want to see change? Wow. I would really like to see more people of color get involved with politics. I think the one thing that um, Obama has done has, especially for, for me being a black man, has made me feel like, you know what, America, America can actually change. It was something that you never really thought that this would come. I mean, every, even back in the days of Martin Luther King, you never thought that the day would come when we actually have a black president, you know, or even a possibility of a black president. So I would love to see politics get a lot more diverse. Um, probably the economy. Yeah, stop all war. There you go. Um, build levees. Build some more levees. <laughs> Instead of bombs. I just want to see uh, the Iraq. I want soldiers out of the Iraq war and um, just want gas prices to go down, and lower taxes, and. Um, Definitely lower uh, student loans and stuff like that. I think that things with the war need to be taken care of and just we need to get the economy back on track with rising gas prices and food prices rising. Like, I just, you know, I'm hoping that everything can get back on track. In this upcoming election, which side do you say that you would support? Definitely Obama. Obama. <laughs> Obama, baby. <laughs> For President Obama or candidate Obama. Obama. I support Barack Obama. 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 Um, I'm a Republican, so I'm sort of supporting McCain. I lean more towards Obama, but I'm, I'm not even sure if I'm going to vote because I feel like one of the biggest problems in the country today is that too many people vote irresponsibly and they don't really research the issues and they vote because, you know, they fall to one side or the other for one specific reason and they kind of just run with it. Actually, I, I don't know yet because I think there's a lot that still has to be discovered about both candidates uh, and more has to be found out about both vice presidential candidates before I make an informed decision. Ron Paul. He's going to legalize it. Great. Hi, I'm Shannon with the latest news spanning the music scene. Pink Floyd's founding member and keyboardist Richard Wright died on Monday at age 65 after battling cancer. He helped co-found the Pink Floyd sound, as they were once called, in 1965. At the time of his death, Wright was working on a solo album. He was an amazing musician and will be missed. Britney Spears is reported to release a new album titled Circus on her December 2nd birthday. A new single called Womanizer will be the first off the new album and is said to be on air as of September 22nd. Hanson started their Walk Around the World tour on the 7th. The independent album titled The Walk is inspired by their time spent in Africa and they are currently trying to help those suffering from HIV and AIDS. Teaming up with Tom Shoes, Hanson invites their fans to come on a one mile walk with them before each performance to raise awareness of the poverty and disease many children have affecting their lives every day. It was a productive month for record companies. Albums released in the past couple of days include Avenged Sevenfold, Live in the LBC and Diamonds in the Rough. Buck Cherry, Black Butterfly, Ice Cube, The Essentials, Leonard Skinner, Second Helping, Nelly, Brass Knuckles, Neo, Year of the Gentleman, Wayne Brady, Long Time Coming, Aesthetic Lullaby, Rattlesnake, Kimya Dawson, Alphabet, and Gym Class Heroes, The Quilt. And now over to Dan at Brownwater. <laughs> Brothers, oh, I don't feel good right now. Oh. I don't feel good right now. I need to like just shout. Alright, I'm just kidding. Hey guys, I'm Dan. I'm bringing you guys brown water Wednesday nights in the pub from 9:30 on to 12. Uh, it's a great chance to come out, play you know your own music, or do whatever. Pretty much perform in front of the crowd. Check it out. It's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Gonna see some clips. Have a good one.
How's it going? What's going on, man? What are you guys' names? I'm Zach Braff, just like the actor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Anthony Ponciglione. And how often do you guys play Brownwater? This is our first time this year. We played a few times last year. Maybe six times last year. What are your majors? I'm a business major. I'm a finance major. And what do you guys like most about playing Brownwater? I mean, just a chance to show off our music, yeah. musical talent to people. Yeah. And we have some original songs, like playing that in front of people. But we just love playing together. Yeah. So you guys like playing with each other? Yes, we do. There's yeah. a few. There's a few it fights. Happens. There's a few fights here and there. But how do you guys come up with the music that you write? Uh, well, you know, sometimes, usually, what we'll do is we're either by ourselves, and he'll think of the music, and then I'll make lyrics to it, or I'll have something together, and I'll, he'll you know, just collaborate with it, and we'll just put it together, and it turns out to what it is. Do you guys have a name? Do you play by any uh, aliases or anything like that? No. no. Right now, we got nothing. But there was a few in the past, but we had to know deal those. So they're open. We'll, we'll get one eventually. Do we, should we expect to see more brown water out of you guys in the future? We should. We should expect to see a lot more than that. It's a bigger and better thing. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs>
strange noise coming from the kitchen area. It sounded like this. It was like... And I didn't know what it was. It turned out that um, a little old lady about this... Uh, hi. She came around the corner and she was wearing like a little shawl like she was from Russia during like the Soviets. And like she walked past me and she had no pupils. Like everything was just black in her eyes. And she looked at me and she went... I just had like a seizure in front of me and then walked off. And he goes, that's Nana. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nana. <laughs> Love Nana. She was great. We Probably the best song you've ever written. Thanks. I just, I can't even grasp how amazing of a song that was. Do you, um, do my uh, singing scan any better? Yeah. Seriously. I'm being serious with you. Honestly? You kind of, when you first started out, you kind of made my ears bleed. <laughs> like you sounded like you were going through puberty. <laughs> but seriously, you sound like, like switches or muse, mm, Kaiser Chiefs, killers, I don't know, those kind of bands. I love all those bands. That's what I was trying to say. You grew so much as a singer. Well, thanks, Mo. That really means a lot coming from you. Um, listen, I um never got a chance to thank you about before. Huh? You've always been there for me supporting me even before I ever got into the band. Well, you have talent, Johnny. I It's not like Mo talent, like piano by the ear. I'm sure there's so many people who can play an instrument by ear. But then I heard like this one song you wrote recorded on Pro Tools. <laughs> it's just something stirred in me. Yeah, it must have been your bow moves. <laughs> uh -oh. What was it like? What was what like? To just be on stage for the first time. Um, <laughs> I was scared shitless. <laughs> what? You were scared? You looked so confident. No. There were at least 200 people there. 200 pairs of eyes watching my every move. You should have seen me backstage before we went on. I mean, it wasn't until I got to like the second verse that I became comfortable. And then, I don't know, it was like a dream. Like, I became this entirely different person and this whole other side took over. <sighs> Man, that was the best time of my life. You're virtuous, so you know. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mo. You've, you've done so much for us. We love you so much. We lay down the law, so what the hell are you here for? We lay down the law, so what you need me for?
I'm Eric. The movie's guaranteed to make your pants to make your pants come off. How do you want me to end it? Like, and that was brown. I don't know. It's, I don't have this plan. This wasn't. <laughs> well, the movie is guaranteed to make your pants off. Damn. To make you make you laugh your pants off. The movie is guaranteed to make your la make you laugh your pants off. Why can't I get that? I wrote it. I wrote it. This movie. Make your pants come off. I keep on saying make your pants come off. All right, all right, come on.